Okay, Hobson of the Washington Post, February 27, 2015. America's gambling prohibition is created or has created what many consider the world's largest black market for gambling. So today I'm gonna call, I'm gonna talk about um, how gambling is illegal and why it shouldn't be illegal because it's gonna happen every day. You know, like problems within like our own selves. I'm sure we take a gamble every day. <laughs> um, it plays a major role in sports. Like if you go to Vegas, you know, Everyone there is like gambling, and I'm sure everyone wants to go to Vegas one day and gamble. I don't know if you have. Or you guys go to the casinos right here in Morongo or <laughs> Pachanga. Another thing is um, a lot of the time everything's vetted illegally because due to certain states and regulations, we cannot bet on like games or something like that. You know, the only thing we can bet on is horse racing and with greyhound racing in certain states. And um, working at a golf course. A lot of the older guys, I see that they are placing bets and they're making calls, like while they're on the course or they're, you know, making, um, how should I say, business deals as they like to call it. So my main point one is that gambling is a big problem in sports. I don't know if some of you guys know who this man is. This is Pete Rose, one of the greatest players in uh, MLB history. He had the most hits, 4,256 hits over his, I think, 23 year, 23 year uh, span. Yeah like that span in um, the MLB. As a coach, he was illegally betting against his own team. <laughs> right there. And I knew a lot about this guy because this is my dad's all-time favorite player. And to this day, he's still not allowed to be in the Hall of Fame because of what he did. Just because of that, but you have other like players using steroids and cheating. And this guy, you know, I don't think anyone's ever gonna beat his record, if you guys know. Now going back, you know, gambling and sports goes all the way back, you know, and right here in the 1919 World Series called the Chicago Black Sox, or White Sox, they later called them the Chicago Black Sox because of what they did. Eight White Sox players were taking bets from the Mafia, and one of the players was Joe Jackson, which is probably one of the best players as well in pitching. He used to be called Shoeless Joe Jackson because he was poor. He didn't have shoes, so when he would play sports, he was always like barefoot. But he was taking bets because he needed the money, and like any other player would. I mean, if you're coming from a poor background, you need the money, right? So you go back, like players today, such as Reggie Bush, Phil Mickelson, a famous golfer who just got indicted for trading illegally, getting all these inside like scoops for like trading benefits and betting. He got in trouble for that. Now I'm gonna tell you the cause. First of all, it's money. Everyone loves money. Money is the root of all evil. In Vegas, when you go to Vegas and you start walking around to the casino, you'll see, you'll see this, a sports book. Usually you'll see a bunch of guys, you know, old fat guys taking bets on their phone, talking to somebody. But all this is, has a lot to do with the money. If you notice, it's always a sport you're watching. I mean, when you go to the Super Bowl, in Vegas, you have every bookie almost like all over the country there taking bets. And before every like Super Bowl game, you'll notice that they'll say so and so has uh, four points, like the spread's 44, and you can take the under or the even. If you're on the under, let's say you get the spread is 44, so that means each team has to reach 44 or under. So you take either the, the what's it called, the over or under, you place your bet. And this. Horse racing is totally different because you get like 17 to 1 odds and all this. And one of the or one of the people at the golf course, his name is Bob Baffert. He owns American Pharaoh. For those of you who don't know who American Pharaoh is, he's like the horse that uh, won the Triple Crown. The Triple Crown hasn't been won in almost, I'm going to say, I think 40, no, 39 years. The horse is worth millions of dollars and his odds on that were like 2 to 1. So everyone knew he was going to win. But over here, it was all like here. It was illegal to, or it was not illegal to gamble on it because it was horse racing. But in other like sports, such as like baseball and stuff like that, you cannot really bet on that because you know they want like the government wants their share of money. I mean, who wouldn't want money, right? <laughs> so every time you guys go to Vegas or something like that, and you see all these guys, don't oh, they're just fat old guys. Some of these guys are millionaires. In order to be a bookie, you have to cover your own bet. So that means if you put down 200 bucks, someone bets against you 200 bucks, 
the book, he has to have 200 bucks just to play. But if you lose his bet, he takes a profit of about 10%. So 200 bucks, so not only are you gonna pay 200 bucks, but you're gonna pay him an extra 20 bucks for his fee. Next, I'm gonna talk about the solution. Now the solution is, in my case, is to make illegal gambling um, legal. <laughs> so if you notice how much illegal money is getting made in the billions compared to legal, like Nevada and Las Vegas, now, if we were to put that on, um, like, you know, we tax it, I'm sure we're gonna tax it, the government would take it, they want their share of money. But think of like all the revenue that our state would make, and California, one of the biggest states, like New York, they let fans do on DraftKings do it, but DraftKings got in trouble because I, like, something happened between the, the government and stuff, the government wanted a bigger cut, and they said like, no, so they had to like end it, that's why you used to see all the fan do commercials, and the DraftKings, now they're not like, that big anymore. Now, on top of that is if you look at the California lottery, every time you win, they take a percentage of tax. Not only does it go to the government, it also goes to schools and stuff like that, how like tuition for like, you know, like welfare, people like everyone that needs money. That's why I'm saying they should like legalize it. And I mean, everyone's one day is probably gonna go to Vegas and you know, have a good time. You're gonna wanna play. And let me wrap things up by, uh, you know, it won't be stopped at all. You go to a casino and make a bet, or you can make a bet with your friend, that's still considered illegal because you're betting money illegally without, you know, going through the government or anything like that. And um, so let me close you with this. What is life if not a gamble by F.E. Higgins?